We have a Hulk Hogan promo, and I was curious about all this. This is, in hindsight, this was Hulk Hogan's last show with this company in a decade. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a screw. All I remembered is there is a screwy finish in the actual match. And uh, it seemed like they were. My memory was, having not seen the show now in several decades, that they just went all out to protect Hogan, probably thinking they would do a rematch down the line. No. Of course. That was not to be. No, the, he, Hulk Hogan came out here, and from the second he appears to the second he ends, his job is to lay the groundwork for what Yokozuna is going to do next. Hulk Hogan thought he was going to go to Hollywood and never wrestle again. That's clear, or at least not for a long, long time. He does this promo, and it's a Hulk Hogan promo, and there's lines up the Pythons and the Hulkamaniacs and all this, but really, what he's really talking about is America. And yes, he does note that here in Ohio, he is safe from Pearl Harbor sneak attacks and all this, but it's about the red, There's no blue. water nearby, he says. Yeah. There's no water nearby. That's what he said. Listen, he's not a teacher. He's not a geography. No, he's... that's the, the point was, there's no water for our base to be attacked by yeah. Japanese ships in yeah. fucking... Uh, ah. Yeah. So he moves on. It's the red, white, and blue. It's the heartland of the USA here in Ohio. Yokozuna, what you gonna do when America and the largest guns in the world destroy you? So because of the match, it's Hulk Hogan versus Yokozuna. And again, Hogan by this point obviously knows this is gonna be his last match for a long, long time. And I don't know if he'd be gone for a decade, but he he knows. And he comes out and for about 15 seconds, you can just kind of see him taking it all in. But at the same time, it's also set up he's standing next to the video wall. And so they got a shot where Hogan Hogan is eyeballing Yokozuna in the ring, and Yokozuna is eyeballing back at him. Back at him. But they put Yoko on the video wall, so the viewers at home is like they're going face-to-face. -face. And then they start doing this match, and it's not like any other Hulkster match because... Hulk would always get in there, like Nikolai Volkov would start to sing, and Hogan would jump in from behind, and Iron Shiki would wave in the Iranian flag, and Shiki kick his ass, or Hogan kick his ass. Yoko starts to do that whole sumo ceremony, and Hogan is standing back in the in the corner, and he is scurred. This is a different big guy that he's ever fought before. They keep locking up, and Hulk gets shoved down. He keeps going to Jimmy Hart for advice. He doesn't know what to do, and Yoko eventually just takes over and dominates him. Just beats him up. Beats him and beats him and beats him. There's a couple of failed body slams, but Hogan, this is the one giant Hogan was never able to slam. And Hogan gets some flurries of offense, and they always it's a series of clotheslines or a series of boots, but Yokozuna never, ever goes down. The only time Yoko does go down is like when he misses a splash or misses an elbow or misses a uh, corner charge or whatever. And even when it gets to the point in the match where Hogan will be making his comeback, He's hitting the ropes, and he's hitting Yokozuna, and he goes down. We've never seen Hulk this vulnerable before. Finally, Yoko hits the Uranagi. Hulk kicks out and hulks up. The place is going crazy. The place thinks they know what's going to happen. But Hulk goes, three punches, big boot, Ho Yoko won't go down. Tries it again. Three punches, big boot, Yoko won't go down. A third time, three punches, big boot, Yokozuna finally goes down. Hulk drops the big leg on him. And Yokozuna kicks out at two. I was in the building when Brock Lesnar pinned The Undertaker. It was similar to what happened in this crowd when Yokozuna kicked out of the leg drop. The air just got sucked out. They can't believe what they've seen. Now, at this point, something very screwy happens. Uh, Fuji takes the ref or whatever. A, there's a bunch of cameramen at ringside. Some guy dressed like Jimmy Valiant. It's bizarre. Bro. <laughs> Here's the thing. They actually had, and they, they did this for uh, for WrestleMania, too. They, they had uh, all the photographers around ringside. And uh, the story was they're, they're Japanese photographers for the, the newspapers in Japan. And, I mean, to me, it, it's like you should have got one of them and give them the gimmick camera and and do this like it's a, uh, like it's a shoot. Because the way it was done, this guy, it was the, 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 he was in this preposterous disguise. And I guess they did do a, a segment afterwards where Fuji was like, Camera, what are you talking about? So I guess we're supposed to believe that he hired this guy to, to flash Hogan with the exploding camera. But it was like so hokey that it was just begging for some sort of follow-up. 
And we never got a follow up. No, no. It was just like it happened. 30 years later. And- Literally, in storyline, we don't know who this cameraman was. Yeah, and why like, he did like it. Fuji had the one line about camera. What are you talking about? But like, they go backstage after the match, and there's Jack Tunney, and I'm waiting for like, you know, Jack Tunney always had some fucking ruling about something, and uh, all he goes is, "Just want to congratulate Mr. Fuji and Yokozuna on winning the championship." I'm like, what about the exploding camera and the guy dressed up like Jimmy Valiant? What the fuck was that all about? So no follow up. Yeah. So if, if if you don't know what Brian is talking about, a cameraman in a terrible disguise climbed on the apron. Hogan approached approached him. The camera shot a fireball into Hogan's face like Jericho and Eddie Kingston, and uh, Hogan is blinded. Yoko hits the, uh, the not the Mongolian chop, the double throat chop there, which I just hit my camera, hit my mm-hmm. mic, and uh, Hulk goes down and Yoko drops the Hulk Buster leg on him, pins him with his own move. He is once again WWF champion. He is a st- I, and there, there was a screwy finish, but for 10 minutes, Yokozuna kicked Hulk Hogan's ass and then he beat him. And then after the match, dropped with the, the bonsai, bonsai dropped just for good measure. There was nothing that Hulk Hogan could have done here more to put Yokozuna over on his way out. Well, not getting flashed by an exploding camera. How is that? Now, I don't know who this cameraman was, but he was either Cheech from Cheech and Chong or it was Inspector Cluso. I'm not sure exactly. This disguise was ridiculous. I don't know how. Uh, I I can't believe they didn't do anything to follow this up. There was nothing, no backstory, no no investigation, nothing. Now I know Hulk Hogan left, so why would you do that? But nothing. You know. By the way, speaking of follow ups, that have nothing to do with his match whatsoever. In that uh, that Luger match with uh, Tatanka, so the match ends and it's a draw, and neither man are going oh, yeah, yeah. up further in the King of the Ring. So uh, Luger, not Tatanka, Luger grabs the mic, and he says, "Damn it, I came here to win this King of the Ring, and I'm not leaving without winning. And so therefore, I want I want five more minutes." And the fucking place goes crazy. It's her cheering Luger. And, of course, he whacks him with the, the form and everything like that. But uh, I think that was like the first tease of, uh, of Luger going babyface, which is going to happen very, very soon. Very soon. Because we got the Lex Express right around the corner. Yes. But, yes, no follow-up to uh, Jimmy Valiant. Zilch. Old yeah. Excalibur. We've got heat with him. <laughs> I was clearly joking when I said they sped up his voice. I had nothing to do with this, Mr. Caliber. <laughs> oh, now you have to apologize. His name is not Excalibur. His first yeah. name isn't Xavier. I like Excalibur. He used to be <laughs> yeah. a Caliber. If anything ever happens, like AW goes under or whatever, you know they always have those those uh, those commercials about drugs, and they have that guy that reads the list of side effects. Yes, one out there. I, 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 it's potentially lethal taint fungus. <laughs> well, that would certainly be bad. And I am not exaggerating that at all. <laughs> My point is, is they... I they will re- never take this drug under any circumstances. They... Potentially lethal taint fungus. <laughs> Lol. Lol. I hate him. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.